I remember when I was working with a dude at the end of 2017, being 2018, recommended by Dr. Ken Berry. And he said to me, Mark, if you're having any more than a couple of off days a month, you're doing something wrong. I kind of thought to myself, yeah, right. How is that even possible? And as I went over the next two to three years, and especially when I started working with Dr. J, I found out that it was certainly possible. It takes a bit of dialing in to get there. But what we've got to understand is three key concepts here. Your body needs A-grade workers to build muscle, to build neurotransmitters, brain function. You need A-grade fuel to keep all these pathways turning 24-7. So you've got energy, testosterone, detox 24-7. And you need to give your brain something called trophic support. And the reason you want trophic support, and I'll show you what that is today, is you do not want your brain to be this typical 82-year-old brain. And this is the bullshit that we're fed by mainstream. They say, as you age, you, you, you're, you're fatigued. Your cognition tanks, right? Your testosterone tanks. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that that's not the case. My advisor, Dr. J., five-year PhD in hormones, said, and I quote, it's surprising how little testosterone declines as you age if you optimize your health. Professor Huberman, neuroscientist from Stanford, said on several of his podcasts, and I quote, there are men in their 90s, which are not rare, that are making as much testosterone and DHT, dihydrotestosterone, as they were in their 20s. So we've been fed some kind of bullshit over the years. So I want to get, you know, my goal in life is to have that healthy 82-year-old brain because without, without that brain, what are you left with? And you might be surprised to learn how simple it is to get to that brain, even if you don't have great brain genetics. So what I'm going to share with you here is a couple of strategies about getting this right. I want to show you the true A-grade building materials and fuels you need to put into your body to have that V8. Now, I do not want the system's advice because it gave me a little four-cylinder engine. End of 2018, I upgraded. I got the V8. 2020, I slapped a supercharger on that son of a bitch. And this is what you can do now with cutting-edge science. But you've got two cams to listen to. You've got mainstream, and their advice is you're going to get fat, tired, you can't, your, top, your cognition is going to tank, and that's the brain that you're going to end up with. The new science says, no, nah, you don't have to put up with that. You can have the body, the brain, all of it. But we have to tick a few boxes, and that's what I'm going to show you on this video. So we can have consistent energy, testosterone, muscle growth, fat loss, brain function, if we do things right. So what I'm going to play for you is a, is a video that could trigger some people. So be it. So be it. But what we're going to look at here in the green are the A-grade, the A-grade gear. So the A-grade fuels and the A-grade building materials. And then you, you'll probably be kind of thinking to yourself now that this shit here, I don't want a piece of. Guess what? That's what they recommend that we eat. And not only is it low-grade, it's packed full of Trojan horses. So we'll examine that here today. So let me just play this video for you. This is Dr. Ken Berry, and this is the first time I spoke to Dr. Ken, board certified MD, in the beginning of 2020. And this always stuck with me. Pay attention to this one. They're very outgoing. They're very thoughtful, very creative, because they're actually getting all the nutrition that their body and their brain needs to function optimally. Now, Human beings are omnivores. There's no doubt. We can eat mm. plants and live for years, yeah. but that's not optimal. And so there's a reason that dictators and emperors and kings fed their slaves uh, rice and beans and corn because it's cheap and you don't starve to death, right? Yeah. But now you're never, you're never going to be able to over, overthrow the emperor because you're chronically malnourished. Your brain is chronically malnourished. And so it's easy to keep you down. It's easy to keep you working at your slave labor. And you don't have to worry about the slaves ever rising up because they don't have the energy. To do that. 
It's only when you start feeding a human being lots of fatty meats, lots of eggs, lots of organ meat, that's when we start we start to get kind of uh, intelligent and rowdy, and we kind of want to be left alone, and we kind of want to do our own thing, and we kind of we we want to write our own books and write our own songs. Yeah, we kind of become amazing. But and so, so many people in the world have bought the untrue story that eating a slave diet is the healthiest diet for a human being. Eating a plant-based diet, that's, that's exactly the diet that the Roman emperors fed their subjects to keep them from revolting. It, that they, they had a full belly, they didn't starve to death, but they had no motivation, they had, they had no mental inquisitiveness or ingenuity, and so they were easy to, to keep down. Easy to keep down. And as you age, you'll end up with that diseased brain. You see, you just don't have the A grade gear to build the brain in the first place, to build the muscle, to drop the body fat, to have, you know, all of it, everything that we, that we want in life. So we're surviving with this, this thing here, this four cylinder engine, when we can really have a V8. And if we decide to, we can slap a supercharger on that son of a bitch. And that's what I want to do. So let's get into the weeds here. So we're going to talk about lack in the body primarily and also Trojan horses. So you got things that decrease performance, two categories, one Trojans and two lack. So if the body lacks or it's got Trojan horses, that's what you end up with. A diseased brain, low testosterone, you struggle, not a lot of energy. It's not what I want. But there's also things you can do to increase performance. So you can get the V8 or maybe a V6 if you want a V6, you don't want to go too, too high. And you can also slap a supercharger on that son of a bitch. All right, so we're just going to talk about a few of the, the big problems in our body. Magnesium. It's estimated that around about 70% of the population have a deficiency in magnesium. And that's a big problem for a lot of things. Let's just talk about energy production, fat loss first. So I learned from doc, Dr. James Dynickel Antonio, PhD. So our most of our cells create this thing called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So the way we make energy is we cleave off a phosphate and just like a match that makes energy. So you got your adenosine here and one, two, three phosphates, adenosine triphosphate. Now what has to happen is magnesium comes along, binds to one of those phosphates and just like a match, you release energy. So the question now becomes, what happens if you don't have adequate magnesium? Well, the body's still going to make energy because you're eating food, but you're not going to have optimal energy. So it stores it for a rainy day and you get fatter and tired up. Not cool. Now, another thing that magnesium does, it's required in every single DNA repair enzyme and it's also required in the synthesis of DNA and RNA nucleic acids. That sounds pretty important to me. So if you've got low magnesium, what happens is your cancer risk goes up. If you've got adequate magnesium, your cancer risk goes down. Is that juxtaposition there? So I want to make sure that my body's got everything that it needs. And don't jump off the, the horse now and go get, grab magnesium. That's not going to fix the problem. Stick with me here. I want to show you where the nutrient-dense foods are, the A-grade gear. Now, another thing, what happens if you lack protein and you lack testosterone? Well, let's just start with protein for a moment. So to build muscle, we need amino acids from protein. Now, the system recommends that we eat low protein, right? So we don't have enough protein to go around. So the problem with that is when you have low protein, and many scientific publications have shown this now, low protein cause significant reductions in body weight. So there goes your muscle knots because it's a building material of muscle. Your testes, yeah, they shrink. The epidermis and seminal vesicle weight and testosterone peak. So you're not going to have a lot of testosterone with that one thing alone. Now to build muscle, you need two things. I'll come to this slide in a moment. You need two things, legends. You need optimal testosterone, namely free T, and you need this pathway switched on, mTOR. And we won't go into that today. 
Well, let's just say we've got optimal T and three T and we've got that consistently. So we're consistently building muscle. So what I learned like from people like Dr. J, genetic expert, the three T comes into the muscle cell, hits what's called a transcription factor. That then goes to a promoter and promotes a pathway into the nucleus of the DNA. This is where magnesium comes back in to create those DNA bases in mRNA, all right? So then they come out as mRNA pro proteins in the ribosome, and guess what the mRNA proteins are? Amino acids. So again, a low print protein diet doesn't really cut it for building muscle because you've got to create those mRNA proteins. Nucleic acids, you need magnesium to do that too. So that'll come out into the muscle cell, the ribosome of the muscle and build muscle. Ooh. So we can clearly see that we need adequate protein to make testosterone and to build muscle, right? And obviously adequate magnesium, vitamins and minerals. Now, this is where it gets into brain function. So again, I don't know about you, but I don't want that diseased 82 year old brain. And that's what a lot of people expect to have as they age, your cognition takes. But that's not supposed to be the case. So, you know, Dr. Jay's told me, but also scientists like Professor Waltman from MIT, that our brain has evolved in increasing size and IQ as we age when we give it trophic support. And guess what trophic support is? These six things here. But I'm just going to focus in on number one. We water the brain with healthy levels of hormones, DHEA, neural steroid, testosterone, healthy levels of estrogen. And I'll explain what they are in this presentation. Thyroid hormone, huge for brain function. Growth hormone, vitamin D, good vitamin status. So just to show you how important brain function is regarding testosterone, listen, is it actually gives you a risk of Alzheimer's and gut issues and joint issues. So I put it on this ride. If his testosterone is low, which the, the system, the government says is fine, it's going to drive Alzheimer's, poor gut health, poor joints, and it's and joints. Yep. the medical system to go to have operations and take Alzheimer's drug them up later in life. Exactly. So testosterone is the absolute foundation for this one. They want to protect against all that stuff. Testosterone. Simple, right? Testosterone oh, really healthy. Yep. Yeah, pretty simple. So that one, especially with age, right? Yeah. Uh, it's important. And seasonal effects. All right. So you need healthy levels of testosterone specific for your gender, whether you're female or male. And I'm not going to get into that goddamn conversation. <laughs> All right. If you know what I mean. So let's just keep it where it is. Now, to keep healthy levels of estrogen, and I'm going to show you how critical healthy estrogen is for testosterone production shortly. We just have to understand how we can possibly keep estrogen at healthy levels. Well, it all comes back to the liver. The liver, the liver makes estrogen, which is fat loving, water soluble. So we get rid of it, right? So that's how we keep it at healthy levels. And that's step number one. There's another step. I'll show you what that is shortly. But the whole point of what this slide is about is to show you that you need great nutrient status vitamins and minerals, but you also need a lot of glutathione. And we're, we're talking about that now. But to make glutathione, guess what glutathione is? You might be surprised to learn that number one, it is the master antioxidant in your body. It's the game. And it's a tripeptide or tripeptide protein. Three amino acids, glycine, cysteine, and glutamine, right? Protein. So if you don't have enough protein, you can't make our optimal glutathione levels. We're not done yet. The liver also needs cysteine. It needs taurine, glycine, and glutamine, and also choline. It needs all of these things. So you've got to put A-grade gear into your body. And that doesn't necessarily mean you need a shit ton of protein. You need the right levels. And we'll talk about that on the next video, what those levels are coming from the experts in proteins, all right? So we just got to understand that the liver is going to control the metabolism of estrogen to keep it at healthy levels, which is going to soar our testosterone. Now let's just segue for a moment in the glutathione. Remember, it's a tripeptide protein. 
right? The master antioxidant. So here's what it's responsible for. Now, this when, when it's low, this is what's going to happen. And if you waste it too, if you eat an inflammatory diet, you're going to waste it, burn through it. You won't have much. So neuro and brain, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, ALS, migraines, multiple sclerosis, autism, ADHD, ADD, bipolar, depression, cardiovascular, heart disease, erectile dysfunction, hypertension, stroke, immune and cancer. This is where it's playing back into cancer again. So, you know, we've got to stack the odds in our favor if we don't want to get cancer. And we're talking about lupus, asthma, acne, Lyme, allergies, arthritis, segueing into thyroid and pancreatic functions, so diabetes, hyper hypothyroidism, right? Then over here into the rest of the categories, you've got skin inflammation, you've got accelerated aging, arthritis, chronic fatigue, gout, pulmonary problems, cystic fibrosis, infertility, ulcers. So if you lack A-grade gear, you're never going to have enough glutathione to take care of business. All right. So where does the, the, the if like if you're relatively healthy, where does the most oxidative stress happen that glutathione needs to take care of? Let's just explore that for a second. So this is just demonstrating that we need great vitamin status. So the mitochondria in all of your cells, and this is a citric acid cycle where they produce their ATP. So we talked about ATP and how we need magnesium to activate ATP. As you can see there, needs lots of B vitamins to spin that atri at citric acid cycle to make ATP. Now the mitochondria do a lot of incredible things, but here's just three. They are a necessary step to make testosterone in sex hormones. Shit. They produce the bulk of your energy in the form of ATP. And they're the only place you can burn body fat. So let's just open up the mitochondria and explore them a little bit here. So when we breathe, we create of what's called ROS, reactive oxygen species. That's nasty, right? One of them here is superoxide. So when we breathe, 90% of ox oxidative stress is through respiration, through breathing. So we've got to take care of business. So what happens is in the mitochondria, you've got superoxide dismutase and the manganese binds to that enzyme and allows it to work. So if we lack manganese, we're not going to be take, take care of the first step. So first step is to turn superoxide into hydrogen peroxide through superoxide dismutase. Then it's transported out into the cytosol of the cell. Adelase, another antioxidant, can take care of it, or glutathione here. So glutathione to the rescue there. So you can see how now that when you've got A-grade gear, you've got everything to keep these pathways turning 24-7, optimal muscle building, optimal, you know, optimal fat loss, optimal glutathione, absolutely key to understand. Now, getting back to cancer again, the mitochondria. So this is where a lot of cancer can propagate. So in the mitochondria, you create, create a lot of reactive oxygen species. So if we're not taking care of business, we're damaging our DNA. So that's where magnesium comes along to repair it and also create the DNA bases to repair the DNA in the first place. So it's like a, a, a super trick, I guess you can say. And if that doesn't work, we've got another process whereby we can kill precancerous cells. That's called apoptosis, cell death of shitty dumbass cancerous cells and other dysfunctional cells. And I'm going to come back to this. I'll circle back to this in a moment. I just want to talk about another source of inflammation and oxidative stress, our food supply. And this is what we're told to eat. Going back to Dr. Kim Berry there, but as you can see here, amplifiers of systemic inflammation. So a lot of our food is highly inflammatory before we even eat it, before we even eat it. So basically, you've got advanced glycation and lip oxidization products in big food. And it causes all these pathologies. Atherosclerosis, heart disease, arthritis, pulmonary disorders like asthma, 
And right here, you've got 50 times more free radicals. So not only is it inflammatory, it's, it's producing a lot of reactive oxygen species that we're wasting our energy fixing. So we're eating this food, it's tanking our energy and burning through vitamins and minerals. And you need glutathione to mop that up. And if you're eating a low protein diet, well, you can kind of see the problem here. And then number five, two points. Number one, it disrupts your endocrine system, all of your hormones. And the most insidious one here is it shortens your telomeres, which is associated with accelerated aging. Now, to make matters worse, they've got chemicals and pesticides and herbicides and things like Z, ZEA, which are potent estrogenic. And I'll explain why that's bad in a moment because it can drive primary and secondary, secondary hypogonadism. And just to segue into that, I'm going to play a video for you. Uh, this is um, kind of shocking, but it really shines a torch on big food. These cells within the penis, these smooth muscle cells begin to die. This is called apoptosis. Um, apoptosis happens for a number of reasons, but once you lose about 15% of the cells within here, all of a sudden you lose the ability to expand completely. You can still expand and you can still have an erection, but it's not a full erection. And so when that happens, you've got your, you've got your tunica, but those veins are staying open. So the blood comes in, but the, and the blood then goes right back out of these open veins because you have, you haven't expanded fully and you don't have a full erection. Does that make sense? So this is called venous leak, CBOD, but it's not a vein problem. It's actually a problem with the cells inside the, the corpora cavernosa. These cells, these smooth muscle cells are the problem. Now, what causes these cells to die? Oxidative stress of some sort. So things that cause inflammation and oxidative stress can increase the, the death of these cells. So that could be just AIDS, but it also could be poor lifestyle choices. It could be diabetes or high blood pressure. It could be a high sugar diet. It could be not exercising. Also, low testosterone over time could do that. So anything that causes these cells within the penis to die is it's going to compromise your ability to maintain an erection because those veins don't get clamped off properly against the tunica albuginea when you have a partial erection. Holy shit. So our food is destroying everything. And it's got potent estrogenics in it. So let's just unpack that right now. So let's just explore how we make testosterone, as I learned from Dr. J, PhD in hormones. All right, so what you see here, I've got a couple of things to explain. Number one, this study here and how it correlates back to the pulse generator. So the brain here has got what's called a pulse generator. Again, over here, and I'll explain that in a moment. And this is the ball sack that makes your testosterone, your testes, your ball sack, right? So every couple of hours, if you are optimized for human health, you've got A-grade gear. You don't have all that shit, low glutathione, low protein, all that crap. You've got plenty of vitamins and minerals. The brain will then release a glycoprotein hormone called LH into the blood serum. And it's going to go all the way down to your ball sack here and make tea. Beautiful. This is how it's supposed to happen. And you've, the two biggest negative feedback loops are high testosterone for you or estrogen too high. That is what we've got to stop from happening, getting estrogen too high. Now, remember those pesticides and all the shit I just mentioned, they are potent estrogenic, so they mimic estrogen, so they're shutting us down. So the question now becomes, what should healthy levels of estrogen be in a man's body? Dr. J. So our natural estrogen is about 20 for men, 20 nanograms per liter. And again, it's not very high, is it? So let's just say ideally you want it between 15 and maybe 40. So when it starts to get north of that, we're going to be shut down. So you might be at 600 when that happens, or you might be at 300 or 200 when that happens. So you can see that we need healthy levels of estrogen. So we've got to take out the two classes of foreign estrogens. The chemical estrogens, I've got another video about those, and phytoestrogens from food. And the system recommends that you eat lots of phytoestrogens. Ah, that's interesting, isn't it? 
it goes back to what Dr. Ken Berry said about slave food, keeping us down, keeping our tea down. So the next thing we've got to understand is how we can have elevations in estrogen. So let's unpack that can of worms. Before we do, I just want to talk about this study here. So they got healthy men and they blocked this aromatase enzyme. So this is what I'm going to talk about in the next slide. And what they found, going back to the pulse generator, when they blocked aromatase, they had increases in both LH pulse frequencies and more pulses of LH. Beautiful. So that's pretty good. Then you've got increased pulse amplitude, so larger volumes of LH, even better. So that clearly shows that we need to keep estrogen at super healthy levels. So let's have a look at a couple of the things that increase estrogen in our body. So basically, all your androgens will go through this aromatase enzyme and convert it into estrogen. So testosterone to estrogen. All of your androgens like DHEA, testosterone itself, and dihydrotestosterone, turning all of that into estrogen. So insulin, cortisol, xenoestrogens, phytoestrogens, chemical estrogens. Free fatty acids, your trigs up too high, inflammation up too high, and estrogen itself. So it's a double whammy. More estrogen means more estrogen. So you're taking your hard earned tea and turning to estrogen, and you might only be at 300. So you feel like garbage, and you're this dude here. Not your fault, and you can fix this. So one of the easiest ways to fix that is to get your insulin fixed, because that's one of the biggest drivers. So let's just explore that now. So this is where it's ridiculous. Dr. Ken Berry explained this to me. So when you go to your doctor, they will very rarely check for insulin, fasting insulin. They'll only check it when you're really overweight and you've, you've basically got diabetes. That's the only time they really check for it. Now here's where it's absurd. It's just ridiculous. You've got two kinds of blood panels, your standard ranges, which you don't want to be, sorry, you don't want to be in. And then you've got optimal ranges where you certainly must be in if you want to be optimized for peak human health. So a standard panel says between 2.6 and 24.9, which is absurd. An optimal range is between 2 and 5. See the big difference there? Let's just say that your insulin is at 10. Well, you're still wasting your testosterone and it's lower than it should be. And everything is harder. But then you've got things like homocysteine, C-reactive protein, your trigs. So this is why you need to get a comprehensive metabolic blood panel. I've got information on that page about where and how to do that. So let's just look at the pathologies that insulin is driving alone. So as you can see here, the upregulation, stress, insulin, and xenoestrogens. Taking your tea through aromatase here, turning into estrogen. And it's driving all of these pathologies that big pharma come along and give you drugs for. And remember on previous videos, I've talked about that these big pharma drugs drive down testosterone and keep it down, but they also take your free tea, your testosterone, and aromatizing your estrogen. So we're never truly optimized. So it's driving these pathologies. Enlarged prostate, I had that. Gynecomastia, man boobs, I had that. Obesity, I was kind of fat. Atherosclerosis, I guess I was well on my way to getting heart disease too. I had hypertension. You can get type 2 diabetes. I had insulin resistance and I had erectile dysfunction. But it also drives prostate cancer. You might be thinking, well, how does it drive prostate cancer? Well, we know the cancers can be driven up by low magnesium and number two, low glutathione. But number three, when insulin is up too high chronically all the time, it inhibits these oncogenes from triggering apoptosis, cell death of precancerous cells. Let that sink in. So that's what's happening to a lot of dudes. Low testosterone driving all those pathologies. Big pharma comes along with their drugs which drive down testosterone and you feel like shit and you feel like a worthless man and you're scratching your head going, what happened? That's where I was in 2017. 2018 to 2020, I got better. 
In 2020, I took off. And that's what I want for you, legends. So if you like these videos, legends, drop a comment below, share it, like it, so we can reach more men so they can learn the truth, the bullshit about what's going on in our world right now. If you're paying any attention to what's going on in the world, especially over the last three years, we can kind of see what the system has set up for us men. It's not pretty, is it? So one more thing before I go on to the, the solutions that you can start to implement to start getting this right, having all your energy pathways turned in 24-7. So V8 gear, that's what I'm going to show you. And before we do, just one more important thing. I love to speak about this one because it was one of the biggest things that helped fix me move away from all of those pathologies. It's what's called the Omega Index. So the biggest problem with the big food supply they promote a diet that's rich, saturated in omega-6. Now, there's nothing wrong with omega-6. We need it. But it's lacking in omega-3. So over time, you have a instead of having balance, you have a juxtaposition. You've got way too much omega-6 and very little omega-3 in your body. And you can fix this in about 12 weeks. It only takes 12 weeks to fix. So right here on the screen, you've got changed gene expression. Now, that's not a good thing. You've got low-grade inflammation. So you're tanking your glutathione. You feel like shit. You're producing the increased production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So you're wasting a lot of energy making that shit, which you shouldn't be. You should be making testosterone instead. And you've got decreased serotonin. So there goes your happy, happy brain. But it's a double whammy because you've got decreased serotonin precursor availability. Then you've got increased cortisol production. Then you've got decreased fluidity of the cell membrane, and I'll circle back to this and what that means. Then you've got less serotonin receptors in your brain and alterations in the dopaminergic system, so you're more impulsive, which isn't a good thing. And the science is pretty clear that when you've got that juxtaposition, a high omega-6 ratio, You've got leptin resistance, so you're always hungry. And you've got insulin resistance by default. So your insulin will be up, your T will be converted into E right there from the get-go. So it's a mess out there. And when you've got elevations in insulin, you've got increased hunger, heightened perceived pleasantness of sweet taste, and increased food intake. And you're eating nutrient-poor foods and you're packing on the fat. As I explained at the beginning of this there. So it also drives inflammation, as we can see here. And here's the problem with inflammation. Inflammation inhibits the release of LH. Right? So you're not making a lot of testosterone. And that contributes to hypogonadism. So you've got primary and secondary. And even if you've got that, you can fix that problem. I've got videos about that too. But what really grinds my gears is that Low T concentrations are strong predictors of frailty, disability, and cardiovascular events. And as Dr. J said to me, it does this. I mean, the problem with inflammation is it shuts off muscle growth. It basically tells your body you're in a stress state. So not, it's not a building state. Right. So, you know, you're doing your best. You've got this chronic inflammation. And you just, you're fatigued. You feel like shit. You can't pack on the muscle. You... You, you might get kind of lean, but you're not really there. You can't see the abs, you know what I mean? And what's a paradox is that when your T gets to a certain level, it actually lowers inflammation. Listen, Dr. J. Then that's, he's got that CRP gene, which again, very sensitive to inflammation, you know? But one of the things that helps with this, besides just eating healthy, sleeping, exercising, testosterone. Testosterone shuts off at CRP. Right. So hopefully it's already good, but if his, if a CRP is high, that's like a magic trick to getting it down. So if he's, so yeah, if he's above that, testosterone is going to flatline. Yep, yep. Yeah, it works both ways. Like if, yeah. if your CRP is high, your testosterone goes down. If your testosterone is high, your CRP goes down. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that omega-6 shit, you can fix it in about 12 weeks. Now, just to emphasize... <laughs> Emphasize a point here, low testosterone, diabetes, erectile dysfunction, cardiovascular disease, 
endothelial dysfunction, insulin resistance, inflammation, dysregulation of adipokines, which isn't great, and you've got increased fat and obesity. Shit. All right. So what tea does, as you can see, look, there's a lot of research. Go out there and check it out yourself. Tea exerts a significant inhibitory effect on adipose tissue form for, you know, formation, fat mass, and various adipokines. And it also reduces TNF-alpha, inflammation, interleukin-1 and 6. All right, so we can see what's really going on there. Now, I'm just circling back. Remember how I mentioned here decreased fluidity of the cell membrane? So your metabolism slows down, your protein synthesis slows down, you slow down. But when you get your omega index here, and it only takes about 12 weeks, you've got increased rate of muscle protein synthesis. Yeah. So, you know, the omega index is a pretty big deal. Now, a lot of the guys that we help, I and mean, the reason they come to us is because they got low T and they just feel like shit. And the vast majority of them are around about here. It takes about 12 weeks to get there. Pretty simple. Now, another thing that elevations in insulin will do is it will decrease growth hormone, and so does glucose. So they're both the same. When glucose is up, insulin is up, right? As Matthew Walker says here, PhD neuroscientist, Without growth hormone replenishing the lining of your blood vessels called the endothelium, they're shorn and stripped of their integrity. Vessels rupture, heart attack and stroke become common, and the system blames cholesterol and saturated fat. And growth hormone does three other important things. It works alongside testosterone and thyroid hormone to build muscle. Number two, it rips off your body fat. And number three, it repairs your tissues and organs. So the brain, the heart, the blood vessels, as we just saw, to protect from heart disease, the ovaries if you're a chick, the testes if you're a dude, so you can increase testicular size and volume, your intestines, your kidneys, the muscle, including the smooth muscle of the penis, bone marrow, cartilage, liver, central nervous system. And we're missing out on this. Because most people have elevations in glucose and insulin there, and they blame cholesterol for that. So, yeah, as you can see there, it's a bit of a mess. And a special mention goes to vitamin D. It's actually a steroid hormone. And again, a lot of people are deficient in vitamin D. And it's it involved in steroidogenesis to make testosterone. So... They say that, you know, anywhere from 20, I think, to 30 in a standard panel is okay. New science says between 50 and 100. For me, anecdotally speaking, I like mine to be at about 60. Here it was a bit too high, so I brought it back down. So you want to get that check. The reason I like it about well, between 50 and 60 for me personally is that it can inhibit with the production of melatonin, the sleep hormone. So I've noticed anecdotally when it's at, you know, close to 80 to 90 to 100, I don't sleep as deeply because it inhibits the production of melatonin. Now, genetically for me with melatonin, I don't have a lot of melatonin receptors in my brain. So I need a lot more melatonin to get into deeper story sleep. And vitamin D for me, again, anecdotally speaking, I need it between 50 and 60 to be optimized there. And let's talk about cancer again with vitamin D. So not only glutathione and magnesium are needed, but we and we also need vitamin D. Cancer, but let's look at what else it does. Multiple sclerosis, autoimmune disease, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, neurological disease, asthma osteoporosis, but you can see all those red dots. That's the human body. That's the activation sites. As you can see, the testes, the skin, brain regions, spinal cord. It's, you know, we need optimal vitamin and mineral status, especially vitamin D. So how do we start solving this problem? That's the question. So here we go. Two strategies. Number one is slightly advanced. Well, what you can do is get an app like Chronometer or Carb Manager to track your vitamin and mineral status. A little bit more complicated. 
that as you can see, it's going to track where you have lack in the body. So it really is as simple as that. And you can also get a V8 tune-up, right? So you can get your omega index tested, your trace minerals, your water-soluble vitamins, your fat-soluble vitamins to see where you are, truly do have lack. There's a lot of things you can do. If you want more information about that, just reach out to me. I'm more than happy to provide more information about that. Now, the easiest way to look at this is where are the nutrient-dense foods? That's how we need to think about this. We just have to select the nutrient-dense foods. It's a two-fold problem, though, and I'll unpack the second part of the problem in a moment. So let's just have a look at where the nutrient-dense foods aren't. And before I get to that place, I just want to play this video again from Dr. Kim Berry. Listen. They're very outgoing. They're very thoughtful, very creative, because they're actually getting all the nutrition that their body and their brain needs to function optimally. Now, human beings are omnivores. There's no doubt. We can eat mm. plants and live for years. Yeah. But that's not optimal. And so there's a reason that dictators and emperors and kings fed their slaves uh, rice and beans and corn because it's cheap and you don't starve to death, right? Yeah. But now you're never, you're never going to be able to over, overthrow the emperor because you're chronically malnourished. Your brain is chronically malnourished. Yeah. And so it's easy to keep you down. It's easy to keep you working at your slave labor. And you don't have to worry about the slaves ever rising up because they don't have the energy or the motivation to do that. Yeah. It's only when you start feeding a human being lots of fatty meat, lots of eggs, lots of organ meat, that's when we start, we start to get kind of uh, intelligent and rowdy. And we kind of want to be left alone and we kind of want to do our own thing. And we kind of, we, we want to write our own books and write our own songs. Yeah. We kind of become amazing. But, and so, so many people in the world have bought the untrue story that eating a slave diet is the healthiest diet for a human being. Eating a plant-based diet, that's, that's exactly the diet that the Roman emperors fed their subjects to keep them from revolting. It, that they they had a full belly, they didn't starve to death, but they had no motivation. They had they had no mental inquisitiveness or ingenuity, and so they were easy to, to keep down. Yeah. Easy to keep down. So you know this is kind of what the system recommends. All of these, you know, a lot of these things here, like even chickens, pretty light, right? But the rest of them are just you know vegetables, as Doctor Ken said. There now each to their own. Clearly, but you know, the whole grains, they're even low. You know, there's fine grains, super low. And you can see it for what it is. I mean, it's just, it's there. And this is from the USDA's website, the government website, USDA. Check it out for yourself. So where are the nutrient rich foods? Well, here they are. Right there, as Dr. Ken said. So we've got all of these. So if we start eating nutrient dense foods who are a long step in the right direction, but we've also got another problem, and I'll unpack that on the next slide. But I just wanted to tr tr dive into one very quickly here. As you can see, the only vegetable you know, on here really is dark leafy greens. Now, the problem with dark leafy greens for me and also Dr. J is this. Listen, leafy greens screw me up. <laughs> me too, man. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. I've been wearing a CGM, a continuous glucose monitor. Yep. And even when I eat just like like a leafy green salad with zero carbs, mm. it spikes my blood sugar. Is that inflammation? Yeah, it's like your your body's going into fight or flight. Yeah. Yep. Holy shit, that is so. I know. The it's same thing. I can literally. To me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mark, I can just for the experimental sake. Yep. I bought some Coca Cola and some other bullshit stuff just to yep. try it. <laughs> I literally get more blood sugar spike from a, like a small leafy green salad with nothing on it <laughs> than wow. I get from a from a can of Coca Cola. <laughs> That's incredible. Like I'm I'm the same. I've checked. Like I just cannot tolerate. I even get osmosis sometimes. Have to run to the yeah. toilet. It's that bad. Yeah. Right. So you know everybody's different with their food sensitivities. Dark leafy greens for me and Dr. J. Stress and inflammation in our body can't eat them. So everybody's different. Not one diet fits all. So I can't eat that. So let's just have a look at, you know, basically the foods that I can eat. So these are my genetic sensitivities. 
Nightshades, can't eat them. Lectins, can't eat them. Leafy greens, can't eat them. Gluten and gluten crossover foods, can't eat them. And then finally, food additives and preservatives are very sensitive to all those chemicals. They don't detox them very well. So if I put them into my body, I can expect a tank in testosterone, a tank in muscle growth, a tank in anxiety, but an increase in anxiety, fatigue, and you feel like shit and you blame yourself. So you've got to put A-grade gear into your body, select for nutrient-dense foods. So really, I select for nutrient-dense foods and I supplement the omega-3s, you know, to get the balance back to optimal. A folate supplement because I don't like to eat liver and I've got a problem with hemochromatosis and I've also got to supplement vitamin D with K2 at about 5,000 units per day and I do supplement minerals and a little bit of vitamin C and that's really about it that I supplement but I actually do supplement more than that that's for different things like trophic support I'm not going to drive into that today but that's the bare minimum. I need to keep all these pathways turning 24-7. Then I've got consistent energy, muscle growth, fat loss, brain function, all of it. And I get it. This is tough to get right, especially if you're you know, mid-30s, 40s, and 50s to get this right. And if you feel like you need help with that, there should be information on this page. Take a quiz to jump on a call with me so I can work out specifically what might be the problem and give you steps moving forward. This will help you fast track your, your experience with us. And if you want to entertain the possibilities of working with me and Dr. J in group coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching, we can discuss that too. So if, if that sounds like something you're interested in, jump on that quiz below and I'll see you on a call. So how's that guys? Have you found that insightful? If you got any questions, drop them in the comments below and uh, help me out here and share it so other people can see it and we can reach more men to show them that we've been fed some bullshit to keep us down, as Dr. Ken Berry said, keeps our testosterone down, keeps our fat loss up, our anxiety up, our confidence down, it keeps us down and we're just surviving. We are not thriving and that's the problem. So there it is. It is pretty simple when you look at it. If you put A-grade building materials and fuel into your body, you're a long step in the right direction. The only thing beyond that, you've got to work out where your sensitivities are and what you, you might need to supplement, you know, providing that um, you've got all of these boxes checked here. So that's all you really need to think about, legends. So uh, any questions, drop them in the comments below and see you on the next video.